I just bought the cheapest running driving MOT Volvo 700 in the UK. I'm sure I've heard something like that somewhere before. Hands up if you spend most of your earnings going through Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Gumtree, that kind of thing, looking at cars you can't afford, don't need, have no reason to buy, but would really like to anyway. Oh yeah, that's too many, okay. Do it the other way around. Hands up if you don't spend your evenings looking at cars on the internet. Okay, you three, I think you're looking at cat videos, that's to the left. That, that's not on Facebook anymore, go, just, no, no, that's just weird. Okay, the rest of you, you're in the right place because that's how I spend most of my evenings and generally I have to hold myself back quite hard to not go and buy junk I don't need. However, you may remember last year we did that 500 pound car challenge racing at Santa Pod. Well, I got invited again and that meant I got a reason to be looking at junk on the internet. You know the phrase, go big or go home? I'm going big. This is a 1988 Volvo 740 GL and there's a lot of it. I started doing the search looking for things that were small, cheap, fast, that kind of stuff and pretty soon I was looking at everything under £500 and when I clicked onto this for £175 I assumed it was a scrapper with no MOT but I had to look anyway because who doesn't love a big old 1980s Volvo and when I saw it had six weeks of MOT left on it I had to make a phone call very fast indeed and I spoke to a very nice man called John who'd owned the car from new 32 years ago he's owned this car and he has every receipt ever pretty much for this vehicle. What a machine. I think he was quite sad to be giving it up but he didn't need it anymore, doesn't drive that much because he lives close to town and he's retired. Doesn't need a massive thing on this and he's got another car at home. And uh, I promised, and I'm going to stick to this promise, that this car is not going to be bang erased, it's not going to be scrapped. I'm going to look after it and make it nice. So when I do finally pass it on to the next owner, it's a car worth keeping. So let's take a look around what I spent £175 on. Oh, what a bargain. This is possibly one of the best cars I've ever bought, you know, in terms of, you know, retro cars as opposed to real cars. So, first fill up of what apparently is called Sherman 1988 740 GL, which looks absolutely immaculate underneath a little bit of dirt short drive here to the petrol station has so far shown up that all that's wrong with it it probably wants a radiator maybe because it's dripping a little bit of water there's a new temperature sender or sensor and a few panel lights heated seat works radio works turned it on it was playing ABBA at me mamma mia can you believe it this thing is amazing 140,000 miles barely looks look at that that's fabulous. So we rode here in this Saab 9.3 and I'm riding home in its older uncle. I guess it's not really a brother, is it? It's kind of an uncle. This is a very cool, very Swedish evening. My first Swedish car, how cool. Well, down the front, as you can see, it's not done many miles in the last couple of years. I think he's doing about 1,000 miles a year across both of his cars. So it's collected a bit of uh, vegetation, but that vegetation is on the headlight wipers. My word, I love a headlight wiper. I've just noticed for the first time it's missing one of, oops, it's missing a wiper blade here, so it's not essential, but I will find one. And it's still got washers on there as well. It's also had a very minor knock down here. I don't know if I can straighten this bumper out perhaps. It's pushed back ever so slightly, but I'll investigate correcting that. It's not essential if I don't, it doesn't change, it's not affected the headlight alignment. Um, that's a bit faded. If I'm feeling very generous, I might change that lens. This headlight does have a star chip in it, but I don't think, because there are no sharp edges, it's going to affect the MOT. That should be fine. Oh, look at this. This is proper 80s spec. Spoilerage, front chin spoiler. These are so cool. Every car I used to draw when I was a kid in the 80s had a chin spoiler like this. But I'm pretty sure I had a toy one of these in the shade of silver. I think part of the reason he was selling the car rather than this other one was because his mechanic had told him that it needed some welding for the next MOT. Now, I, I took a chance on it thinking it can't be anything too serious and if it is, well, it's worth it in parts alone even though I don't want to break it. However, having had a bit of a poke around underneath, I've not put on a jack yet, but it's quite half the ground and you can see a long way underneath this car without even jacking it up. Here on this wheel arch, you can just about see something that shouldn't really be there, but it looks a lot worse than it is. It's just by a drain hole and it seems to have just rotted out a little bit and it will, let's get closer. 
this is a flat plate on the side of a box section that's really not a very difficult thing to weld even to my hopeless standards just with some very thick grade steel if I choose not to do it I'll pay someone to do it but I don't think that's a big deal to do that grind it back to good metal and then plate some thick steel over the side of it having cut back all the rust no problemo dude and the rest just looks so solid looking up under the front arches it's pretty good condition the uh, under seal is starting to flake in a couple of places like there but the metal behind it is good so I'm on a winner there so I'll get this moving back down the car what else have we got we've got lots of car the paint is a bit flat and a bit faded and a little bit hairlined as well but tea cut polished buffed up this I think will come up quite nicely there is a stone chip in the windscreen it's just on the edge of the wipers arc so I think that'll be an okay maybe an advisor on the MOT at worst look at these hubcaps though these are actual metal hubcaps. This is absolutely remarkable. They look so good. I'm going to check what colour the wheels should be and I'll give these a repaint just because they're just starting to rust up a little tiny bit, but that'll look so smart. Now looking down the flanks of this beast, it really is in astonishingly good condition. There's a little scuff here on this wheel arch, but that looks like it'll probably polish out. Um, lots of kind of crud all in all of the corners and green stuff growing on it. But look at the doors, look at the wings, the sills. It's all good solid metal. Uh, there's a few little dings and things and the paintwork is fairly flat and a bit scratched in places, but a really good polish, get some good cut on it. That will come up incredibly nicely, I am absolutely sure. There is a bit of a rust issue just about to start there where some crud has built up in the rubber and it's caused it to kind of go all horrible, but we'll clean that out, clean the metal, clean the crud out of the rubber rust proof it for the future. Looking further back, look how long these back doors are. This is like limousine spec. And count the quarter lights. It's got a door quarter light and a C post quarter lights. It's was one eighth lights? I don't know. This makes this car a, it's a nine window car, a nine light car, if you go by the old fashioned parlance. Rear wings, it's as good on the other side as it is on this side. And it's got these gorgeous full metal hubcaps on all four wheels. Um, not one of them is even remotely curbed and this, will polish under the, the light bit of dust they will polish up fantastically um, I know it's had a new tire on the back this one is a Polaris 16 made by ah oh, Sailwin <laughs> found in good ditches everywhere um, I know I'm not meant to be spending any money but I might see if anyone anywhere maybe in the back of my garage has some tires in stock that I can fit onto this car before I take it on the challenge, just for my own peace of mind. But again, ignoring the terrible tyres. Oh God, sail win. No wonder it's going sideways in every roundabout on the way home. Um, these arches, again, are fantastic. Volvo original mud flaps. This huge impact bumper with just barely a mark on it. The backlight plastic has gone kind of flat. I will have a go at taking these out because the boot is leaking. So I'm gonna have a look at cleaning up all the rubbers and the drain holes. Um, I'll take these out to, to clean the uh, gaskets on these, but while I've got them out, I'll get some plastic polisher stuff to try and put a better face on them. Also, it's got a new, a new uh, back box rear section of the exhaust. So he spent a fair bit of money on this car fairly recently, well, in the last year or so. Um, I did notice this morning that uh, there's a crack in this lamp, which has been taped up with, well, tape. I don't think that's an MOT fail, so I may or may not bother doing this. Um, these are the original dealer stickers. He bought the car from Fishers of Horsham. In fact, there's a sticker in the back window for them as well, which is the main dealer for Volvo back in 1988. And he had it serviced there until the company shut down. And look at these big safety bumpers. Now the boot, one little thing that uh, isn't quite right in this car, the structural hydraulic dampers down here, they've given up. The car came supplied with a plastic plant pot which does the job of keeping it open. Uh, it's got big wells either side, so I think you can maybe put auxiliary extra second and third spare wheels in, I'm not sure. But it does include a little bit of oil because it's just had an oil and filter change. It's a bit damp in the boot. I'm gonna have to investigate where that's coming from, whether it's this uh, rubber seal needs cleaning or if it's just condensation. But it does have oops, a full spare wheel, which is looking a little bit rusty. In fact, these wheels, the spare wheel looks exactly like the old 140 steel wheel as well from many years previous. I better get in the car because it's starting to rain quite a lot. 
Now I won't talk you through every single switch and dial on this car because I will do a proper you know, go through a drive in it at some point to give you a full, like a proper review of what a 740 is like from the 80s. But looking at this car in terms of something I've just bought, I am so happy. Look at this mad interior. It's it's got like a velour-y feel thing, like a stripey velour. I kind of like it. These clocks are big and clear. It's missing a couple of dials because it's not a turbo, so I've not got a turbo pressure gauge. And I think it's an oil pressure gauge it's missing as well. I have got the handbook. I'll show you the stack of papers in a minute because that is something to behold. Um, so a few more blank uh, spots here as well because it could have had ESP and it could have had front fog lights and it's not got them as well. But it has got front electric windows, electric mirrors, bum warmers. Apparently the passenger one doesn't work, but I'm going to look into that. It may just be a relay or something that's gone, because the light comes on in the switch, so it's probably just a broken wire or a relay that's failed on that. Um, these door handles are crazy. I love them. So sort of inset deep into the door. Huge door bins. This one is unfortunately broken, but I'm sure we can fix that or get a replacement if I go around a Volvo breakers, which I think I probably will do. You know what I'm like. And these big, big original factory uh, dealer fit rubber floor mats which are huge and waterproof so if you're driving your Volvo through the depths of winter you can stomp in with snow covered boots and the thing will still be fine and protect your carpet. This car does have 145,000 miles on it. The challenge I'm going for is meant to be a sub 100,000 mile car however it's also meant to be a sub 500 pound car and I think I'm going so far under budget I can make up the mileage with the price. I've not got aircon on this car it was an option but Annie didn't go for it sadly. So it's just got a heater and blower. So when I first looked in the car, I thought maybe this was an aftermarket thing. That, then I realised that the Volvo tag here is actually on one moulded face. Looking at the brochure now, it turns out this is the most basic radio they offered. And do you know what one of the best things about this whole experience was? When I first got in the car, turned the key, it was playing Mamma Mia by ABBA. I don't like ABBA at all, I hate ABBA. But Swedish car playing Swedish song as I drove away, it was kind of meant to be. This car... You know, it can't give you a good feel, doesn't it? And that gave me a good feel about this car. Big old ashtray, and this actually pops out, and you've got a fuse box behind there. So I'll go through all of those and figure out if any of them have popped. Ooh, one's melted. Number 23, what's number 23? I think possibly that was for ABS, but I don't think this car has ABS. And the backup lamps, cruise control, overdrive, none of which it has. Let me see if the A... Let me just see if the reversing lights work, if I can find the keys. One does. So I'm guessing it's a blown bulb rather than a blown circuit, hang on. <laughs> There's something which is very, very Volvo here. A little kind of flashy, flashy, ticky, ticky, ticky of the seatbelt not on because I'm sat in the driver's seat, the ignition's on and my seatbelt isn't done up. So it starts telling me immediately. Listen to this thing crank into life. Whoa. Okay, I've not got daytime running lights, so maybe that's what Fuse 23 that melted was. It does have, um, what was I going to say? It does have side lights working still, so at least that is functional. What else to say? Oh, this car is great. Huge cubby hole here, which I found out on the way home. It's just the right width for a Costa coffee cup, because um, I didn't have my uh, furious driving mug with me. Um, that will slot in there, and that will balance quite neatly, so you can have a cup of coffee on your route. Seats are huge and comfy. And the car is just massively wafty. Um, it is missing its headlining there. It was dripping so badly, the previous owner just tore the white fabric off. So it's only got the horrible kind of gooey sponge stuff left up there. So I'm gonna have to look at something to do with that. Big glove box, which has got a few light bulbs in and had even more bits of paper in it. Oh, there's service history on there. Oh, it's someone's phone number, I won't read that out. The T shelf is quite narrow, so it could be an issue. You have to make do with the tea trough. I don't think oops, I've ever had a collection of paperwork as impressive as this lot with a car. There's a lot of old MOTs just there, going back a long way. Handbook, which is obviously extremely useful because I can work out how to change light bulbs, where the fuses are, what each fuse does, how to change stuff and make the car work. Useful stuff indeed. And this I've never seen before. This is the Volvo service record ring binder. That is so cool. Volvo commitment to lifetime care. All the pre-delivery stuff. And this has got its first services stamped into it. One of these is the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection. 
This is its uh, 16, no, sorry, 42 miles on delivery. I think this car was actually dealer registered to boost sales numbers. So while it's a one owner car, it technically had a previous owner, which was the car dealership who didn't register it quite correctly. Um, and then we've got the 6,000 and 12,000 mile services in the first year. This is 1988 and 1989, October 1989 for 16,000 miles it reached. And we've got services going through 24, 30, 36, 42,000 miles up to 1991. Lots more of these. That's really good. And I love this. There's like a piece of modern art that's in the brochure, which I'll come to in a second. I think it looks like a Henry Moore sculpture. Volvo owner information. It's all about the Volvo care. So you've got a free phone number, maps of Europe. Um, whoops, there's an RAC key so you can get into an RAC emergency box. This is the um, Volvo Careline credit card. You keep that in your wallet and ring the number if you get into trouble. It's got the owner's original details on this. I'm not going to show that to the camera. From the era, this is just fascinating stuff. And he kept, this, he kept the brochure. When he was looking at the car, he kept the brochure so I can see what the spec was. I can tell you what, in fact, this is the same interior this car's got. Uh, the GL is pretty basic. I can tell you what options it didn't get. It did have blue Trico plush trim, this stuff, and it has got 130 silver metallic. Um, the standard items include power steering, central locking, uh, electrically adjustable door mirrors, don't work, electric front windows, optional rear windows, ACC, automatic climate control, option not ticked, air conditioning, option not ticked, reclining front six lumbar support, blah, 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 sunroof not ticked, metallic paint, optional, it did tick that, alloy wheels, Optional, didn't tick that. Uh, limited slip, slip diff, oh, that was an option. I wonder if I can find out if it's got an LSD in it. That'd be cool. Fog lights, standard rear, optional front, didn't get them. ABS, optional, didn't get that. But this is, I love a car brochure. This is just so cool. Here is the, uh, probably Henry Moore sculpture. All about how the car is engineered because they really cared about this kind of stuff. Uh, four speed manual with overdrive on the turbos. That's an interesting option. The different engine options. Volvo's famous safety zone, cage of steel. And then we get to the, well, I'm gonna call it the really interesting stuff. This bunch of receipts goes back decades. It's just so much stuff in it. This is quite good. It, he wrote this for me with the car. He's had a cam belt a thousand miles ago. Thing saying, watch the driver's door lock, that kind of thing. But going back through here, there's so much that has been done. The tailgate struts, which have failed. He paid 36 pounds for a pair of them back in 1998, so 22 years ago, those struts failed. Um, there's all kinds of other stuff in here. Um, various switches, rubber pipes have been changed, brake parts have been changed, had new calipers on the rear, new, new discs on the rear about 20 years ago. A receipt from Euro car parts for lower arm bush. It's had an alternator, a water pump, um, supply and hit fit, new heater valve tap. And look, this is all mostly from Volvo dealers. Uh, gasket, ignition cable, uh, belts, Water reservoir, I'm not sure what that would be. Um, and, but so much of it, I had an alternator, that's good. An alternator in 2010, so hopefully the limited mileage this car has done since then, that will still be fine for a long time to come. And the last thing it's had done is a couple of, oh, it had, boom, boom, boom. in 2012 I had a downpipe for the exhaust, and just this year it had a rear box, it's only the middle section, it might be original, but it's probably been changed as well. Radiator hoses, gaskets, oil filters, always good quality stuff as well. The only time it's been scrimped on really is the fact that rear tyres on here now, fitted very recently, about two months ago, are budget Maxxis tyres and they've not got the best grip in the world. So I've never bought a car with this amount of paperwork with it. It's just phenomenal and I am blown away to have this kind of history with the thing. It really does make it quite a special vehicle. If you like your cars with a bit of history and a bit of provenance, it really doesn't get better than going back to the original owner and getting all this with it. This thing is awesome. Do you have a quick look under the bonnet? So here's the engine, big old four cylinder, I think it's a 2.3 in this car. Uh, generally seems to be working. It did say it was losing a little bit of coolant and we noticed, we think the radiator might be, yeah, the radiator's a bit kind of furred up on the back of the matrix. So possibly it's losing, or probably it's losing a bit of water through some pinholes in the matrix. So we'll see how we go with that. It seems okay. It seems it sat in traffic quite a long time on the way home, like an hour's queue on the way back and it didn't have any issues, but I'll look at how much one of those is to replace. Also the temperature gauge isn't working. So I think the sender for that, which is down there, it's just, you can just see it underneath the inlet manifold, is, um, it must be duff. It's kind of awkward to get to, but I don't think they're very expensive. So I'll change that. So I've got a working temperature gauge and I'm kind of pretty much there. 
But look how big this engine bay is. LS swap anyone? And you can see though, it is kind of grubby under here. I am really, really, really looking forward to giving this a really thorough wash, getting in here with all the degreaser, all the washing stuff. Oh my word. Oh gosh. It's got stickers of the servicing, 140,000 miles, oil and filter change, air filter, May 26, 2015. Oh, the rest have faded though. Date of service, I can't read this one. 2000, I think that says. There is so much history with this car. It's just, I've never bought a car with anywhere near this much history. It's phenomenal. It's even got a Volvo battery in it. Wow, I didn't notice that in the dark when we picked it up. I should say we bought this car in exactly the right way. I did all the proper checks. I checked the guy's phone number, I rang it, I said I'd take it and sent him money on PayPal without even seeing him or meeting him. So this is precisely how you do buy cars. And then I went and picked up in the rain in the dark. So that was lucky really, wasn't it? But 175 pounds for this, I'm very happy. Oh, he's got a Bosch filter as well. This chap who I bought this car from loved this car and he did not skimp on anything. And the way it drives, it just absolutely goes to show what looking after a car does long-term. And make sure you change the oil on time. If you use good filters, you just, a car will last forever. A lifetime, pretty much. Tick, 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 tick. Listen to that woof, that woof. As it starts up, it's got a viscous fan, so it really does make a, a bit of a noise off the, the fan. Now on paper, it's not that fast. It says it's about 11 and a half seconds, not to 60. But it seems to have really quite impressive pickup, especially from, from the standstill. So hopefully on the Santa Pod that will be in my favour, even if the top end isn't particularly impressive. Now I noticed on the way back as well, maybe it's because the uh, tyres are Maxxis rather than Pirelli, or, you know, not Continental standard, uh, on a wet roundabout they were quite keen to break free and go a little bit sideways. Which could be hilarious fun, but might also be a bit of a liability, so just have to be a bit careful with that, really. The thing that really struck me that for such a massive car, it all feels really, really light. I mean, the steering is really heavily power assisted, so that's very light. The pedals are all really light as well. And uh, even the gear change is quite, you know, fingertip. And the brakes are you know, incredibly strong. What is really, really noticeable, though, is that the suspension is so soft. I don't know if that's meant to be that way, if it's just got worn out shock absorbers, but I don't think you can see the white lines of the road as we do this sharp left-hander, but this thing is leaning like a sailing ship in a gale going around the corner. When you dab the brakes, you just nosedive. So yeah, I am very, very happy with this car. I'm meant to be selling it as soon as the challenge is done in order, to, as before with the Hyundai, which I regretted selling, to, to see who can make the most profit out of their deal. However, I've already kind of fallen a bit for this car and I've not even driven very far in it yet. It's just got a real something about it that I like quite a lot. Just a big old comfy barge that's just friendly and nice and it's got, I don't know, got a nice... Eight... Got a teddy? Oh, it's got a teddy and I didn't say about the teddy on the back shelf. The car was nicknamed Sherman by its previous owners and there's a little stripy pink lion tiger thing on the back shelf which comes with the car and if you buy this car off me you have to keep with the car as well uh, we're going to call that sherman too it's his lucky charm but something you have to really really be aware of when you're maneuvering this car is how much there is of it because it goes back a really long way i think you need to get planning permission to do a three-point turn Because it's so big and boxy, you can really see out of it and see the corners very well, but you just have to remember that there's that much more bumper than car you can see. So, oh well. So if you like the look of this massive, ridiculous old barge, then hit like and subscribe and that bell notification, which I think is down there, and follow me as I try and get this thing looking fantastic to sort out that welding, sort out the judder, go through the engine bay motor of things as it should be. I'm really, really looking forward to giving this deepest clean of its life and trying to get some real shine back into the paint. So that'd be something to look forward to. Join me on my Volvo journey, my first ever Swedish car. It's boxy, but it's good. Mm -hmm.